Hoslin's first and most significant error relates to the haplogroup found in Tutankhamun. It is not or one a but or one b The first time I watched this TikTok video, I almost lost my mind. Hello, my friend. This person made a 16-minute long video debunking my video on ancient Egyptians. I don't have enough time to get through everything, but I will focus on one of the claims made. For those that don't know, the Y haplogroup is essentially a part of your DNA that you inherit from your father, who inherited it from his father, and so on. And so we can trace it back in a line to find where this lineage began. For those unfamiliar with the ongoing debate, I've created a video discussing TikTokers rewriting African history. You can watch it here. In my previous video, I addressed numerous points and corrected some inaccuracies made by this TikToker named Aslan. To fully grasp the context of what I'm about to explain, I recommend watching that video first. In his latest video, Aslan attempts to provide a response, aiming to prove that his initial claims were accurate and that I was mistaken. Without further delay, let's watch Aslan's response and evaluate the validity of his arguments. I don't have enough time to get through everything, but I will focus on one of the claims made. For those that don't know, the Y haplogroup is essentially a part of your DNA that you inherit from your father, who inherited it from his father, and so on. And so we can trace it back in a line to find where this lineage began. In this segment, Aslan makes a partially valid point about Y chromosome DNA being inherited from the male lineage. However, later he also resorts to misrepresentation by attributing statements to me that I have never made. I will debunk these claims later in this video while addressing the significant inaccuracies in his original content. Now your next point was about haplogroups and how certain pharaohs carried the R1A haplogroup associated with modern day European populations. Yes, that was the case for Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Aslan's strategy involves diverting the conversation away from the original topic to make it appear as if he is always right. In this video, I will meticulously debunk this tactic. Let's rewind a bit and refocus on the primary subject of Aslan's original video. Egyptians actually look like this. Scientists have found mummy after mummy after mummy of all of these Egyptian pharaohs or kings that look like this, with orange or blonde hair. <laughs> To understand the ongoing debate, we must adhere to the original topic, as manipulators often employ specific tactics to distract and conceal their errors. Distraction usually involves introducing unrelated topics to shift the discussion away from their original inaccuracies. The original video was a response of Aslan to another TikToker's video. As you may recall, the main topic of the original video was related to the physical appearance of ancient Egyptians. Aslan subsequently introduced claims about King Tut belonging to haplogroup or 1A and suggested that the ancient Egyptians population was similar to modern Middle Eastern populations. And as I perfectly explained it in my video response, all these claims are completely inaccurate. I clearly proved it. However, it's worth noting that Aslan chose to sidestep these false claims and instead focused solely on the origins of haplogroup or 1B, which was unrelated to the original video. And he does not stop there. He says this. In the response video, the individual stated that Tutankhamun's haplogroup was R1B, which, although found across Eurasia, is also found at a high frequency in Central Africa. He then cited this paper to argue that the haplogroup itself originated in Central Africa, and so the origins of the lineage of Pharaoh Tutankhamun could not have been from outside of Africa. And I would have to completely disagree with this. So, Aslan is lying. But let's not take my word for it. Let's review the actual video to see if I ever made any of these claims. In 2020, their Y chromosome was examined, revealing an affiliation with the R1B haplogroup, which has its roots in West Asia and is today the most common in Western Europe. But contrary to what has been spread, both results are not incompatible, since our 1B is still present in Africa, notably among Central Africans in Chad and Cameroon. It has been present in Africa since prehistoric times, as attested by the following study, and was there even prior to its spread to Western Europe, where it is today the most common. Do I really have to comment? Because to me, if you have been attentive, you already see that Aslan lied in his video. You can clearly hear me say that, 
the Orwanbi haplogroup has its roots in Western Asia. Aslan said this. In the response video, the individual stated that Tutankhamun's haplogroup was R1b, which, although found across Eurasia, is also found at a high frequency in Central Africa. He then cited this paper to argue that the haplogroup itself originated in Central Africa, and so the origins of the lineage of Pharaoh Tutankhamun could not have been from outside of Africa. And the video evidence clearly supports my position, as I never claimed that or one bead originated in Africa. In fact, I confirmed Oslin's statements in his response video, but he manufactured a new falsehood and accused me of it. It has been present in Africa since prehistoric times, as attested by the following study, and was there even prior to its spread to Western Europe where it is today the most common. What I actually stated is that or one bee had been present in the African continent for a very long time, predating its prevalence in Western Europe, which is true, and I will prove it at the end of this video. It demonstrates that it was not introduced by Western European or white migrants who came to build civilizations in Africa. As the mainstream wants you to believe. I want to emphasize that my intent is not to damage Oslin's reputation. I genuinely appreciate some of his videos. However, when mainstream figures start talking about ancient Egypt, they often struggle with presenting accurate information. Let's move on to the next issue. Okay. And I would have to completely disagree with this. Now, the paper he used was from 2013, 10 years ago. And since then, there have been a variety of papers that have explained the origins of this haplogroup and why it's in Central Africa. This paper speaks about how the earliest examples of haplogroup RVV8 were found in Eastern European hunter-gatherers from 10,000. At around 7,500 years ago, it spread into populations that existed around the Mediterranean. And so it's believed that the haplogroup reached Central Africa via the North to South Trans-Saharan movement. It itself was also the result of migrations from Eurasia into Africa. And it's also believed to have originated in Western Eurasia. To support his claims and appear more convincing, Aslan introduced a recent study suggesting that the current presence of or one b in Africa is due to ancient Eurasian migrations within the continent. At this point, it may seem like I've lost the debate, but for those paying close attention, it changes nothing. My previous statements align with this idea, as I have always maintained that or one b has its roots in Western Asia, necessitating migration to Africa for its presence on the continent. This is a matter of common sense. For example, if we say that humans originated in Africa but now exist in Siberia, it doesn't mean that a separate group of humans suddenly emerged in Siberia. Instead, it indicates that some of the people who originally lived in Africa migrated and reached Siberia over time. However, Oslin's claims extend beyond mere argumentation. He uses a subtle trick to manipulate his audience's perception of ancient Egypt and King Tut. I will unveil this powerful trick and explain it further toward the end of this video, as it relates to our next point. We will examine each point before demystifying the strategies used by modern scholars to reinterpret ancient Egypt's history. Now, let's review the conclusion of Oslin's video. Asia, which means that the direct lineage of Pharaoh Tutankhamun likely originated outside of Africa, somewhere in Western Eurasia. Which isn't that crazy to think about considering the location of Egypt. In this segment, Aslan suggests that King Tut's lineage, which is or one b originated outside of Africa, likely in Western Eurasia. This claim is not false, and I have never contradicted it in my videos. However, the issue here lies in the subtle manipulation that Aslan and other mainstream scientists use. Remember, in the beginning of this video, I told you one thing. And that thing is to always remain focused on the main topic. Manipulators often try to confuse the audience by veering off topic, leading to shifts in the conversation. This tactic creates the illusion of victory, even when it's based on misleading diversions from the original discussion. So, what is the main topic here? 
In the context of mainstream media and personalities, whenever ancient Egypt is discussed, the goal is to portray it as the creation of Eurasian populations, while distancing it from its African origins. This is a recurring theme in movies, documentaries, and other media representations, where black individuals are typically relegated to lower class roles like slaves and soldiers. In our initial video, the primary topic centered around the physical appearance of ancient Egyptians. However, we ended up discussing genetics and anthropology to address the original question. By shifting the focus to haplogroup or 1b, Aslan gives himself an escape route to evade responsibility for his original claims, which were false. And despite what Aslan says in his new video, he remains incorrect. I will now demonstrate why. Aslan claims that or 1B lineage, specifically the one defined by the presence of SNP marker V88, originated in Western Asia and Southern Europe. Some scholars support this hypothesis. Let's assume it's true. According to this hypothesis, the haplogroup emerged in Western Asia around 12,000 years ago and reached Africa approximately 8,000 years ago. This aligns with Aslan's statements. However, accepting this hypothesis changes nothing about what I previously stated in my original video. It does not validate Oslin's or the other TikTokers' claims either. Allow me to explain why. What these people try to do is to associate haplogroups with specific phenotypes or physical traits. In other words, if or 1B is prevalent in Western Europe today and the majority of carriers exhibit specific physical characteristics like white skin for example, it's supposed to mean that individuals carrying that haplogroup 12,000 years ago also possessed the same traits. This is a lie. Let me delve deeper. They say that it originated in Western Asia and Europe, right? But that's not the whole story. What they say is one thing. But what they want you to understand is another. By saying that, they know that what most people will understand is that people who looked like this migrated into Africa and thus brought civilization and built the pyramids. However, they conveniently omit that 12,000 years ago, or even 8,000 years ago if you will, there were no individuals on earth who resembled modern Europeans. At that time, all individuals, even those in Europe, were black, as confirmed by numerous studies, especially in Southern Europe. Therefore, the individuals migrating into Africa at that time were still black people, both genetically and phenotypically, not modern Europeans or Middle Eastern populations with pale skin. Scientific evidence supports this fact. White skin and the genetic makeup characteristic of modern Europeans only emerged and spread around 4,800 years ago. In other words, any population that existed before that date did not possess the genetic traits associated with modern Europeans. Genetically, the people migrating into Africa still exhibited the physical characteristics of black people. And Oslin's study also confirms that this or 1B lineage is completely distinct from modern Europeans' lineages. In other words, these are absolutely not the same people. They are not modern Europeans. Today in Africa, they are simply African carriers of the or 1B haplogroup. As I explained in my previous video, this is Amenhotep III, King Tut's grandfather, also carrier of that or 1B haplogroup. Does he resemble modern Europeans or Middle Eastern populations? Clearly not. Refer to my first video to explore anthropology and gain a deeper understanding of this point. Now, let's discuss another significant tactic employed by mainstream media and personalities to appropriate the history of Kemet from indigenous Africans. Do you remember Oslin's argument that ancient Egyptians resembled Middle Eastern populations? Well then, what did they actually look like? Well, genetic studies tell us that they were genetically shifted towards the populations of the Near East which basically means that the populations that existed within ancient Egypt, much of those populations may have appeared physically similar to populations within the Middle East. Essentially, Aslan used genetics and autosomal DNA from random northern mummies to claim that they resembled the modern population of the Middle East. However, he conveniently ignored similar studies related to King Tut. And I want you to note that we also possess these random mummies lineages, but Aslan completely ignored that fact. 
They belong to haplogroups E and J. E is indigenous to Africa and J is from the Middle East. In other words, following Oslin's logic, these people should also be linked to Africa, but he completely omitted that part. Anyway, in the case of King Tut's, we have his haplogroup, but we also have access to his autosomal DNA, which was central to Oslin's initial argument when mentioning the random mummies of Abusir. Combining autosomal DNA with haplogroup data provides a more comprehensive understanding of King Tut's origins. King Tut carried haplogroup or 1B, yet his autosomal composition closely resembled that of Central, West, and Southern Africans. What does this mean? It suggests that the royal family was mainly made of indigenous African ancestors within their lineages and that one of their ancient or recent male ancestors carried the or 1B haplogroup. Therefore, they were African carriers of or 1B. Additionally, it's important to consider that King Tut's dynasty followed the Hyksos invasion and occupation. The Hyksos introduced new genes and lineages, often through violence or intermarriage. While a lineage may have been incorporated into the royal family, it does not necessarily indicate that it was there from the beginning of the civilization, especially knowing how the throne was accessed through royal daughters. This is why I said that Oslin's claims were partially true. But let's go deeper and watch the following video. Was there an imposter in the 18th dynasty? One of Kemet's most well-known dynasties, the 18th, is famous for driving out the Hyksos who occupied Lower Kemet for a century. That dynasty included kings such as King Tut, Amunhotep III, Hatshepsut, or Akhenaten. However, the majority of people are unaware that the royal bloodline has broken at some point during that dynasty. Typically, a dynasty's pharaohs would all be the sons of the preceding pharaoh. But at some time during the 18th dynasty, the rightful heir to the throne, a mysterious and highly revered prince named Amose Siper, passed away during battles in Nubia. DNA testing performed by Dr. Scott Woodward proved that he was the heir of Pharaoh Amenhotep I. Later, a man whose lineage was unknown was chosen to succeed him. Thutmose I. He wasn't related to his predecessors and was likely a military man who weeded a royal family member. His status in those troubled times granted him an access to the throne. This event indicates that his predecessors belonged to the 17th dynasty. Due to his distinct lineage, he is therefore the 18th dynasty's first king. I know that my savvy followers already got it. With this video, we learn that one of King Tut's male ancestors wasn't the rightful heir to the throne, suggesting usurpation. And that ancestor is also the one who introduced that lineage into the royal family. Thutmosis I. When we examine his portrayal, it becomes evident that he displayed physical characteristics commonly linked to African ancestry, even though he carried the or one b haplogroup. Just like his descendant Amenhotep III. A phenomenon that's quite common within Africa. Today, the haplogroup is almost exclusively carried by African people who are perfectly adapted to their tropical environment, in other words, black people. I want you to remember that or 1B is believed to have reached Africa 8,000 years ago. So, these population lived in Africa for more than 5,000 years before King Tut's birth. And we must remember that while living in Africa, they intermingled with the indigenous populations who were also black. From there, I want you to do the math. During these 5,000 plus years, the lineage remained, but genetically they became true Africans, developing unique mutations adapted to the African environment. Which may also explain the African autosomal DNA of King Tut's family. So, these were not Eurasians, but Africans who carried the or one b haplogroup with their specific mutations and who looked like typical black Africans. However, when addressing the history of ancient Egypt, it is crucial to keep in mind that the periods following the Asiatic invasions brought significant changes to the region. These invasions ushered in a new era with the arrival of different peoples who also introduced Asiatic lineages. This is confirmed by all serious scholars who all admitted that invasions led to the replacement of indigenous lineages. We can see it in the case of the 18th dynasty with Thutmosis I whose or 1B lineage replaced the previous one. Consequently, we must be careful when we try to attribute the identity of the civilization's original builders solely based on post-invasion lineages and research. Which is what the mainstream pushes for. They base most of their claims on late periods findings from northern areas. 
The only way to know is by studying the lineages that existed prior to these invasions in the most strategic areas, the South. For those intrigued by this topic, I have explored it in detail in this video. You can access it here, where I provide comprehensive insights into the true origins of ancient Egypt's original inhabitants. What are your thoughts on all of this? Do you agree with me, or do you agree with Aslan? Pick your side and share your arguments in the comments below. Let's engage in a constructive dialogue, learning from each other's perspectives. Thanks for watching Mr. Emotup's channel and see you in the next video.